Good afternoon folks, John O'Fru here. Just out with a few million friends in the form of insects and bugs and microbes. We're having a ball out here. I just thought I'd take this opportunity to point out a few plant species for those of you that are growing perhaps a symbiosis uh, crop or any other diverse crop. Um, so you can understand what it is that you're growing um, at both the vegetative stage and getting into flowering and, and seed formation. And um, this is at this time this crop here has a lot of flowering species. There's still a lot of vegetative species, not a lot of uh, viable seed being produced just yet. Um, but let's just go through and point out some of the different plant species and what they do. Um, so here we've got some Phacelia flowering. This is what the flowers look like. Getting down to the leaves, this is what the leaves look like. Really distinctive plant. Um, here we have some uh, hairy vetch. So these plants here, lovely purple flower. These are the very distinctive leaves. The hairy vetch has a lot thinner leaf. The common vetch is a lot thicker, more oval shaped leaf. Here we have some linseed just before going to flower. These linseed plants really, really highly mycorrhizal. Um, and when they do produce a seed, the seed is a really perfect balance, or no such thing as perfect, but really ideal ratio of omega-3 and 6. And these are the flowers here of that linseed. These are dropping every day and producing new ones. That's one of the really cool, interesting things about the linseed. And in fact, you can see the petals down here on the ground. They actually drop those every day and produce new ones. Really interesting characteristic. Um, what else have we got in here? So we've got the, the Phacelia, and as you can see, bees love Phacelia. Look at that. Okay, Phacelia, hairy vetch, we've done linseed. Let's point out some oats here. So here we've got some oats, um, just getting into emergence. Oh, we've actually got some, some seed being produced here at the, at the doughy stage. If you open this, this oat up here, it's very much uh, doughy in the centre. Big fat leaves, again highly mycorrhizal, um, lots of um, photosynthetic capability, these oats with these big large leaves. Um, we've got some uh, brassicas in, the, in this crop here, there's uh, rape and kale. Um, we've also got turnips down here, these are these leaves here. Um, down the bottom obviously the bulbs starting to form. Um, let's get around the back here, here we have radish, so this radish here is bolting up to seed you can see really tall um, down the bottom is the the big bulb that we all talk about um, this is right on the edge of the pivot so um, where the moisture is a bit less uh, you'll get some um, some seeds uh, some plants going to seed a bit early when they get under stress so this one here I'm not expecting a huge um, oh, we broke them off but um, wasn't expecting a huge tuber down beneath because it shot up to seed quite early. Normally the, the radish grows a really big um, tuber before going to seed. Um, here we have the sunflower, just about to uh, form a little wee, a wee head on it, like this one. They'll open up to be a gorgeous big open sunflower that we all know and love. Um, over here we've got buckwheat. Uh, flowering really beautifully this white plant here underneath the plants uh, Foliage looks a bit like this the pointy leaves really distinctive leaves that you'll see these are the first um, Often the first plant that you'll see uh, out of the ground These are really quick germinating often within 48 hours of planting and they have a really short gestation period of just three months from planting to seed um, these guys are well known for their ability to mobilize and scavenge for uh, phosphorus in the soil and make that available. And a really good botanical element as well, uh, attracting beneficial insects. Here we have the yellow mustard. Yellow mustard, one of the first ones to go to seed, producing seed in these wee pods here. The seeds aren't viable until they turn black. These ones are a wee way from becoming viable yet. Um, let's walk through here see what else we've got here. We have got some rye corn in here, we've got some barley in here, we've got, th those are pretty well known, you guys are pretty well aware of barley and rye corn. Um, what else have we got out here that I haven't covered so far? We probably haven't touched on many of the clovers, the clovers are just coming up underneath. Um, as we walk out through the paddock it's interesting how much it changes. Um, as you walk through you know different patches of fertility here's one I haven't seen yet lupin so these here are lupins um, not sure if these are white or blue yet um, but really distinctive leaf shape 
and these plants here although not particularly palatable the, the animals will eat them especially the cattle um, but the the real key thing with these lupins is the big aggressive uh, root tapestry as well as the nitrogen fixing so big big legumes on those on those lupins really really cool um, so these are the linseed pods starting to flower we talked about the linseed earlier and the flowering these are the pods if you open these up you'll see the seeds lovely shiny seeds looks a bit like liquid when it's flowing here is that when i say flowing when you've got it in a bin when you've harvested it here's some um, what we call faber beans these ones here are really really powerful uh nitrogen fixers it's so cool seeing all these bees working out here um really great nitrogen fixers um the root tapestry on the beans really cool characteristic in fact one of my favorite root tapestries because they grow a big aggressive tap root down and, and in fact in a series of um tap roots they grow down but then also they grow outwards a bit like a a big 3d mass of tap roots they're like horizontal as well as vertical tap roots really really cool um root tapestry for getting in there and opening up these compacted soils um, I think that's about the, the basics covered of what you'll find in a lot of um, a lot of these what we call diverse species uh, pasture mixes or set up crops or cover crops or whatever you'd like to call them. Um, if you've got any questions or want to find out more information about these crops and where they may fit into your system, um, give me a call, Jono at uh, 021 132 8992 or you can see Jono at naturalperformance.co.nz. For more information on seed mixes like this one I'm standing in, check out symbiosis.co.nz.